Hi guys, welcome to the Young Mind YouTube channel. Today we will study about the animal kingdom and a specific phyla of it which is chordate and a subphyla which is vertebrata. So vertebrata includes fishes, amphibians, reptiles, apes and mammals. So today we will do a comparative study of it. All of this is based on NCRT so you guys don't have to worry and a comparative study will make easier for you guys to learn. So let us begin. So on we have a list of characteristics and then a comparison. So let us begin. First of all, we have habitat. So as we know, fishes are found in aquatic habitat. Amphibians are aquatic or terrestrial. The most common example is the frog. And then we have reptiles, which are mostly terrestrial. Aves, which are terrestrial. Mammals uh, live in a variety of habitats. So just l I'm letting you know that all the red marks and the things written in red are really important. So you have to focus on that. Then about body division. So fishes are divided into head, trunk and tail. Amphibians only head and trunk. Reptiles head, neck, trunk and tail. Aves also head, neck, trunk and tail. And so for the mammals. Now we talk about exoskeleton. So fishes we have scales. Torpedo is an example of uh, fishes which doesn't have scale. So it is mentioned in red. Amphibians, they have a moist glandular skin without scales. Reptiles have a dry cornified skin with epidermal scales and scoots. They also possess skin casting. And then we have aves, which are non-glandular skin with scales, without scales. Mammals, we possess hairs. And then cold-blooded and warm-blooded. I hope you guys know what is cold-blooded and warm-blooded. Just giving an um, idea. Warm-blooded or homeotherms are the animals or organisms which can keep their body in uh, body temperature constant even if the external environment is changing and cold-blooded cannot do so. So fishes, amphibians and reptiles are all cold-blooded or poikilotherms. Apes and mammals are homeotherms or warm-blooded. Limbs, uh, which have like two pairs of limbs, fishes don't have any limbs, amphibians do have limbs, reptiles and aves, the forelimbs and hind limbs are modified into wings and mammals also have limbs. Digestion, fishes do have teeth, amphibians have teeth, reptiles have teeth, aves do not have teeth, rather they have uh, in their digestive system they have two very important parts which are known as crop and gizzard and then mammals do have teeth like us. Respiration, fishes do resp uh, respire by gills. Amphibians have like skin, lungs, buccal cavity and the larva respires by gills. Reptiles have lungs and aves also have lungs but their lungs possess air sacs. And mammals have lungs. So now coming on the rest of the characteristics. Just a minute. Might be a... Okay. So now this part has excretion. So fishes and amphibians are mesonephric. Now mesonephric means that their kidneys are not well developed. And then reptiles, aves, mammals are known as metanephric. Renal portal system is present in uh, like those kind of uh, organisms whose kidneys are not well developed. And these include as mentioned above fishes and amphibians. Now nitrogen is waste, like we all know that our excretory waste is majorly urea. Aves and reptiles have uric acid, amphibians have urea and fishes have ammonia and urea. Now see fishes are divided into chondrichthys and ostrichthys. So urea is um, secreted by chondrichthys and chondrichthys are not more in number so like we will consider in the majority as ammonia circulation when we talk about circulation rbc's are only enucleated in mammals and then heart chambers we all know that we have four chambered heart two auricles and two ventricles fishes have two and amphibians and reptiles have three so it is known as incomplete double circulation aves and mammals have four each 
so we know an example called crocodile which has four chambered heart now we talk about hepatic portal system hepatic term refers to liver so it is present in all of the uh, fishes amphibians reptiles apes and mammals now skeletal system the skull you know the base of the skull has two uh, has condyles which attach with the first vertebra known as atlas so in amphibians and mammals we have a dicondylic skull rest have monocondylic nervous system the amount the number of cranial nerves so from reptiles we have reptiles apes and mammals have 12 pairs and fishes and amphibians have 10 pair each i hope you guys are understanding it it is very simplified version in ncrt you're going to find it in terms of paragraphs so i've prepared this which is very easy for you to understand and learn so now we talk about ear so amphibians and reptiles we say tympanum represent ear tympanum is a part of middle ear and it is also known as ear membrane and then mammals we possess ear pinna we also know that it is a vestigial part now reproduction all of them have sexual dimorphism and then internal fertilization starts from reptiles so reptiles apes and mammals have internal fertilization only mammals are viviparous and amphibians possess indirect development now talking about indirect development we talk about indirect development when there is a larval stage included so amphibians a common example frog and it has a larva which is known as tadpole and amniotes and amniotes reptiles to mammals are amniotes now referring to cloaca see cloaca is a common opening of digestive system genital system and urinary system so only uh, fishes and mammals do not have cloaca rest of them do have cloaca so this will make your study very easy all you have to do is after this learn the examples of each so i hope you like the video and if you have any confusion in other topics do write in the comment section and i will surely make a video on them and do like share and subscribe and also a very important thing during this time is to keep smiling bye bye